Hello and welcome back adventurers. Not all of Ravenloft's foul lords are living or once living things. One at least is fashioned from cold metal and even colder darkness. Manufactured in a forge of foulest evil, the enchanted sword Ebonbane has repeatedly proven its right to a domain in the Demon Plane of Dread. The macabre lore that surrounds the origins of Ebonbane begins, curiously enough, with a tale of justice and devotion to the holy cause of truth. Centuries ago, there lived a young woman named Kateri Shadowborn. Her parents were wealthy, but they were humble and just people. Much of their money went to the betterment of life for all those who dwelt in Nidala. As Kateri reached adolescence, she began to feel the emptiness in her heart. For all the good that her family and ancestors had done, she wanted to be responsible for more. Soon, she vowed to follow the holy path of the paladin. As years passed, Kateri Shadowborn fought evil on every front. She single-handedly drove back hordes of marauders and destroyed nests of evil that threatened the well-being of her church. Despite her prowess, Kateri Shadowborn was as vulnerable to time as any mortal. Eventually, she was forced to lay down the holy sword that had served her so many years. Having had no time in her busy life for romance, she planned to live out her autumn years peacefully in the Shadowborn manner. Such a quiet end to a warrior's life was not to be, however. In her day, Katri had made many enemies, and while most of the cults were driven back, one still plotted revenge. They decided to make an example of Lady Katri, to destroy her and her much-valued faith. Over the course of several months, they began to fashion an evil magical weapon, the sword that was to be called Ebonbane. When the final dark rune was set upon the blade, an evil being from the outer plains was imprisoned in the weapon. Much to the surprise of the source creators, however, the spell that they had woven to control the extra-dimensional entity were woefully inadequate. When they cast the last component of this mystical enchantment upon Ebonbane, they found its power turned back upon them. Now they were slaves of the presence they had attempted to contain. One aspect of the magical spell cast on Ebonbane did succeed, however. Although the sword was free-willed, it still had become gripped with an utter hatred for Lady Shadowborn. The weapon quickly began to plan her destruction. Eppenbane arranged to be found by a monk from a monastery near the Shadowborn estate. As soon as the unsuspecting man reached out to pick it up, Eppenbane struck and completely took over the monk's body. Having in disguise, it found its way to the Shadowborn manor itself. When the monk was received by Lady Shadowborn, her natural ability to sense all things evil revealed his true nature. The battle that followed was magnificent. With every ounce of faith she could master, the aging paladin fought off influences of the weapon. Time and time again, the animated sword tried to run Lady Shadowborn through, but always her holy sword turned it aside. As the battle raged on, Ebonbane was unaware that it was drawing the attention of Ravenloft's dark powers. With each iota of Finnish energy that it drew from the evil place of its birth, it increased their interest in it. And finally, as the last stroke of the deadly artifact overpowered and took the life of Katri Shadowborn, the mists engulfed the estate. When Ebonbane, thrilled with victory, tried to leave the grounds, it found that it could not. At every turn, it was confronted by an impossible stone wall. It was imprisoned in the demi plane of dread. Ebonbane has found its time in Ravenloft utterly unbearable. It knows that its powers here a hundred times what they were in the outside world, but it feels that it is no consolation for the loss of its own freedom. Curiously, Ebonbane has never been able to grasp the full meaning of what happened to it. It still believes that it has been imprisoned by some trick of Katri, and no one has survived long enough to convince it otherwise. In addition to its own rage over having been imprisoned in Ravenloft, Ebonbane finds that it has not been wholly successful in its attempt to slay Lady Shadowborn. The paladin, now in form of a geist, remains a part of her ancestral home and thus of Ebonbane's domain. The vital faith and religious strength that guided her through life as a paladin still serve her in death. As long as Lady Catri's pure faith remains unshaken, she seems to be able to resist Ebonbane's powers. From time to time, when certain signs are right and the stars are in the right positions, Lady Shadowborn is able to reach out of Ravenloft and draw persons who are directly related to her. Thus, in addition to serving as a thorn at Ebonbane's side, she has sought to destroy it several times. While she has been no more successful at defeating it than it has been at breaking her spirit, these occasional attacks have only served to remind Ebonbane that it is not the absolute master of all that takes place in its domain. Ebonbane's domain is a very small one. In essence, it is nothing more than the grounds around Shadowborn Manor and a mysterious circular stone wall that surrounds the house at a distance of about 100 yards. Within the wall, Ebonbane is lord. Beyond it, the mists of Ravenloft rule. 
Anyone who comes upon the walls of this domain while traveling the phantasmal forest of Nidala will find that it is not solid from the outside. At least, that is how it appears. Any object or person that is thrust into the wall passes through it effortlessly. Once this is done, however, the exploring object cannot be withdrawn. The only course of action open, aside from the abandonment of the trapped object or a person, is to press forward and proceed through the wall into the Ebon Bane's domain. Leaving Shadowborn Manor, on the other hand, is not so simple. From within, the wall is solid and utterly invulnerable. Worse even, it seems to flow like water under anyone attempting to scale it. Those exploring the domain discover that it is utterly devoid of animal life. Plants are abundant, from the estate's blanket of lush grass to the trees dotted across it. Even fungi and moles can be found here, but all animal life has died out. Thank you so much for your time, patient listeners. I hope I have given you enough signs to look out for to avoid the Shadowborn Manor. But if your heart is just and you do want to help, be careful while crossing the mists.